were flying westbound at 16,500 feet over the Tetons in Wyoming on our way to Idaho Falls Regional. From over the Dunoir VOR here, we know the airport is about 70 miles away, so we'll need to plan our descent soon. We don't want to descend too early and have to navigate the high terrain, but we also don't want to be late in descending and have to bleed off altitude close to the airport. We'd like to know a good point to begin our descent. This point will be called our top of descent. You may have heard a simple rule of thumb for estimating where top of descent should be. We take our change in altitude, in this case going from our current altitude down to the pattern altitude at the destination, and then divide it by a thousand and multiply by three. This ends up being a perfectly workable estimate of when to mark a top of descent. It works for any aircraft, no matter if we're in our single engine here or in a big jet, because it's based on a standard three degree descent angle. Steeper rates of descent won't use this rule of thumb, so if you're landing the space shuttle, don't try this. How accurate is this rule of thumb? Let's look at the map to see what a more fleshed out calculation looks like. We're crossing the mountains westbound, and we'd like to make a three degree descent into the destination. By the way, three degrees looks like this in reality, very thin, so in the interest of clarity and sanity, we'll use this triangle that's not to scale. Now, we won't be doing a straight descent from cruise all the way to the ground. We'll want to level off at pattern altitude, so let's bring the triangle up a bit. We also don't want to arrive at pattern altitude just as we're crossing over the airport. We'd like a bit of buffer, maybe arriving at pattern three miles out. This will give us time to bleed off speed and configure. If you're in a heavier, faster aircraft, you may want to give yourself even more buffer. Let's do some calculations. The airport elevation at Idaho Falls is 4,744 feet. We'll add 1,000 to that to get the pattern altitude. We can confirm that this is the pattern altitude, by the way, in the chart supplement. So this is where we're going down to. Where we're starting from is 16,500 feet. The difference is 10,756. This is the length of this side of the triangle. Knowing this and the angle opposite this side is all we need to calculate the bottom side of the triangle. If you're trigonometry inclined, you take the cotangent of that three degree angle, then multiply by the length of the side. Or we can use an online trig calculator like this one on Carbide Depot and get the bottom side as 205,236 feet. So this is in feet. We need it in nautical miles. Let's divide it by the number of feet in one nautical mile, 6,076, to get 33.8. So if we bring these lengths up to our altitude and combine it so the three mile buffer is included, we get 36.8 nautical miles from the airport as our top of descent point. Let's do our much easier rule of thumb calculation to see how that compares. We need to drop from our cruise altitude of 16,500 feet to the pattern altitude of what will round down to 5,500 feet. This is around 11,000 feet of altitude loss. We take this 11,000 and divide by 1,000. Just drop the last three zeros. Now multiply by three. We have 33. Let's add that three mile buffer and we get 36 miles for top of descent. It's within one mile of our more accurate and harder to do calculation. So this gives us our top of descent point on that three degree glide path. But how do we actually fly a three degree descent? Remember, none of these calculations use speed or descent rate in any way. This calculation is a bit more straightforward, taking our distance at 36 miles and whatever ground speed we expect to fly in the descent, and then getting a descent rate from there. I'll spare us that math and just look at the rule of thumb we can use for our descent rate. Let's start with our ground speed. Our GPS is showing 180 knots. Now all we have to do is multiply by five to get 900 feet per minute. The other thing we can do is add a zero and then divide this in half to get the same 900 feet per minute. Whatever's easiest for you in the cockpit. So that's our descent rate at this speed. Keep in mind that as we descend through different winds, we'll need to update our estimate a bit. The G1000 can make this task easy. Once we start our descent, if we've got our bottom altitude of 5,800 feet bugged as we do here, the MFD can display an altitude intercept arc. This shows where we should join 5,800 feet at our current rate. We'd like to arrive there just in advance of the airport, so we can adjust our descent rate in feet per minute on the autopilot if needed to do so. There's an even easier way to compute and fly top of descent with the G1000. If we've got the destination programmed into the GPS, we can fly direct by pushing the D hard key on the PFD. 
If we scroll down to the altitude field, we can set our bottom altitude as 5,800 feet around the pattern altitude. We can even give ourselves an offset of three miles here too. And once we're set, can activate. Over on the MFD on the flight plan page, what's happened is a top and descent point has been computed, shown here TOD. We have a vertical nav profile on the right, but it's given us a two and a half degree angle, not the three we've planned. We can easily change that by pushing the FMS knob and scrolling to that and adjusting. Notice as we do that TOD point moves further away from our position. We're given both a time to TOD, six and a half minutes, and a target descent rate, 960, calculated off our current ground speed. Now, when we get within one minute of our top of descent, our vertical track comes alive on the PFD. Vertical track. We can use VNV mode on the autopilot to fly us down from the top of descent all the way to pattern altitude, three miles from the field. It's important we set our bottom altitude on the autopilot or this won't work, and we'll arm vertical path mode by pressing the VNV hard key. We have a more in-depth tutorial on VNV on the G1000 elsewhere on this channel, but once we reach top of descent, the autopilot will begin our step down for us. If we don't have this activated, we can still monitor our descent using that white selected altitude arc on the MFT. What if you don't have any G1000 capability? You can rely on that rule of thumb, just having to update your numbers a bit as you go. So you'll say that, for example, if we have 5,000 more feet to lose, drop the three zeros and multiply by three, we should be at least 15 miles out from our target, or else we need to descend more quickly. Tricks like this will make arrival planning much easier and smoother. Obviously, you don't need all the high octane math that we showed you outside of the easy rules of thumb, but if you appreciate having the hard details behind these quick and dirty tricks, and if knowing the background makes you more comfortable using them, you'll find that most of our content on Flight Insight is designed with you in mind. We don't try to over explain in our tutorials, but we try to set up the context you might need to understand all these little tricks, rather than just memorizing them. Check out all our ground schools and courses at flight-insight.com.